You've spoken out on this. You've written about it in the op-ed. Explain to us what the problem is, and we'll put up a timeline while you're talking about exactly how we got from March to this point. Well, you know, back in May, we wrote a letter to the leadership on the Republican side, and they agreed, and we stayed here in August to get confirmations done and to fund the government before September 30th. And here we are this week, two days ago, we voted to pass this down past the uh, September 30th deadline, and I think that's ridiculous. We got 90% in the Senate funded of the discretionary spending, and now we're kicking it down the road. I voted no for two reasons, David. One is it's totally irresponsible. People in the real world can't do this, but this is a release valve that Congress has used 184 times past deadlines. It's ridiculous. And the main reason I voted no is it doesn't take care of the president's priorities. Look, this president was elected to grow the economy, balance the, uh, the court system, and to secure the borders. And we're doing great work in the economy. The economy is growing at twice the rate it was under Obama. The court system, we've nominated and confirmed 68 federal judges now. That's historic. I think one out of every seven federal judges now have been nominated and confirmed under President Trump. So the one thing that's missing is securing the border. And this is a national security issue. It's ridiculous. And the president's fed up, uh, basically. And, and, you know, frankly, so am I. So, so, Senator, as we say when you come on, you were CEO of some big companies. I mean, you, you've done that job. You didn't have the option of saying, sorry, I can't get my budget put together. You had shareholders. You had a board of directors. You had a, a Wall Street that was looking, analysts were looking at you. People respond to incentives. What are going to be the incentives for Congress to say, you know, we actually have to get the job done on time? Where does the incentive come? There are none. That's why we fought for three years uh, with the help of Trent Lott and Tom Daschle, ex uh, leaders in the Senate to help us get a select committee. So we have a budget select committee now that by November we're going to provide a bill to hopefully change the way we do this. This funding process has broken. In 44 years, Congress has only funded the government on time four times. It's outrageous and it's got to be fixed now. So what comes next? Uh, this continuing resolution has to be passed by the House as well. And that gets us through with some of the government at least until December or something like that. What comes next? Well, if, if, if we get agreement on the wall by December 7th, then we possibly can get this thing in a permanent situation. Uh, it's about 25% of total spending. So 75%, we hope, before the end of uh, September, we will be able to get that funded and appropriated here and done. The problem is border security is just dripping down the road, and we've got to fix that. This is a national security issue. The president is apoplectic. He's tweeting this morning about it. Uh, we've just got to get that done. So my hope is, is that we get this done the minute we get past these uh, midterms. So you know the C-suite and you know Washington. There aren't that many people that do that. Explain to those of us who don't know Washington, really, who come more from the C-suite background. Uh, explain to us exactly why it makes a difference. Why does it make a difference whether we get budget or not? It doesn't ultimately matter how much money we spend and for what rather than when we decide well, on it. Well, David, you know, you, you and I have talked about this on air. We have $21 trillion of debt. How did we get here? Under President Obama, we added $10 trillion to a $10 trillion debt that he came into, and now we have $21 trillion. These big omnibus, and by the way, in March, the president said he wouldn't sign another one, and that got, uh, I believe, it, it put religion into the leadership in the Senate, and we did work through August to try to get this funding done. We just got very close, and then they decided to kick the can down the road. This is important because of our burgeoning um, debt. And if we don't get serious about that, we're going to get to a point where we can't deal with it. Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid need to be saved. And right now, they are the, one of the big problems of this runaway expense over the next decade. So uh, I want to talk about entitlements, but before we get to that, let's talk about just the discretionary spending. Because what the yeah. president basically said in the White House back in March was the only way to get this done was to agree to all of the above. The Democrats get everything they want, the Republicans get everything they want. That just adds up the bill. That's not the way you run a company, obviously. Again, how do we get past that phenomenon where we actually make some tough decisions and say, you know what, you can't have everything you want? Well, we actually have a proposal from a Democrat, Sheldon Whitehouse, who says, look, let's go out in the future, pick a date, and decide what our debt should be as a percentage of our GDP, and then do a roadmap back to today where every year you have guardrails about what you can spend to get to that debt to GDP ratio. I support that. That's what businesses do. In business, you don't have the opportunity to not face the tough decisions. Unfortunately, in Congress, you have a release valve, and this is insidious continuing resolution. The president's fed up with this process, and frankly, so am I. We can do better than this for the American people, and they demand it. That's how President Trump got elected. Frankly, that's how I got elected.
So, so and we've been talking mainly about discretionary spending, and you know, and there's a lot of money that's spent that's discretionary. There's a lot more money that's really basically locked in. It's the entitlements you talked about. It's Social Security. It's Medicare, Medicaid. We don't even hear people talking about that for the most part. I mean, the last presidential election, neither candidate said we're going to have to address this issue. Is there any political incentive with your constituents to address it? Do the people of Georgia care about this? Absolutely. When they realize that the Medicare trust fund, this is the trust fund now that backs up the Medicare payments to people who need it desperately, runs out of money in eight years. Social Security is in 12 years. When that happens, you'll see the crisis. It'll be on the streets. People will be up here with pitchforks talking to their con uh, congressional representatives. Look, this is a serious issue. The world knows it. $21 trillion going to $30 trillion over the next decade. We cannot let that happen. President Trump is addressing that by trying to grow the economy. We have this select committee to fix the budget process. We've got to reduce discretionary spending, no doubt. But the real issue is mandatory. We spend $4 trillion running the federal government. Only a trillion of that, a little more than a trillion, is discretionary, 25%. In the last decade, we borrowed 35% of what we spent. And what that means is that every dime we spend in discretionary spending is borrowed money, David. That's military, VA, and all discretionary domestic programs.